Good evening, everyone. The makers of Johnson's Wax present Marion and Jim as Fibber McGee and Molly. With Rico Martelli's orchestra opening the show with Goody Goody. Wrap it up, Rico. <laughs> Join the McGee's tonight. Let me tell you how you can get a pair of Fibber and Molly spinning tops free. The children have gone wild over these clever little tops. On one is a picture of Fibber, on the other a picture of Molly. You start these bright little tops spinning just by a twist of the fingers, and they keep going as long as a minute and a half. The children, and grown-ups too, are using them at parties. It's fun to start both tops spinning at the same time and see which will win, Fibber or Molly. Now here's the way to get these two Fibber and Molly tops free. Buy a can of Johnson's Wax, paste or liquid. Lay a thin piece of paper over the face of the can and trace the letters Johnson's Wax. Send your tracing to Johnson's Wax, Racine, Wisconsin, and you'll receive two of these clever spinning tops free. Use a pencil if you like. You don't have to do a fancy job, but no tops can be sent unless your tracing is made from an actual can of Johnson's Wax. Mail it to Johnson's Wax, Racine, Wisconsin. You will get these two clever little tops free of charge. This offer expires May 30th. Well, here we are again on the corner of 14th and Oak Streets, Wistful Vista. And right over there, waiting for the one man streetcar, are Fibber McGee and Molly. McGee, how often do these streetcars run? Well, I don't know, Molly. I was always taught that when I seen rabbit tracks, there must be a rabbit, but seeing car tracks don't mean nothing. <laughs> well, why don't we ask somebody? Yoo-hoo, mister! Hello, what's the matter? <laughs> you know when the next car will come along, bud? Well, I... Say, is that a knitting bag you have there? <laughs> yes, it is. What are you knitting? <laughs> a three-piece suit. Oh, how nice. Well, go ahead, dearie. You've got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> nice town we moved into, Molly. <laughs> they ought to plant flowers along the side of the car line here. <laughs> Century plant. Oh, because the, the flowers take so long blooming? No, because the cars take so blooming long. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ain't funny, maybe. Well, maybe we better walk with you. Oh, no. No, you don't. Walk clear out to the edge of town? No, sir, not me. Well, that's what we're going out there for, so as we can take a little walk in the country. I know, but, Chucks, we don't want to get all tired out before we start walking. <laughs> if we walk to where we was going to walk, the walk that we walked to get to the walk would spoil the walk. <laughs> you never saw a jockey ride his horse from his home to the racetrack, did you? <laughs> <laughs> don't be silly, McGee. All the exercise you get is from the Davenport to the dining room table. <laughs> and back again. Don't forget that, Molly. <laughs> Did you see the piece in the paper there this morning where somebody threatened the life of that uh, British diplomat, Anthony Eden? No. Yep, they got three plain clothes men guarding him now. Well, they better know their apples. Why? Well, you gotta know your apples in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> <laughs> they say he's on his way over to Switzerland to attend the conference of the League of Nations. I suppose they hold their league meeting in Switzerland because it's got a lot of mountains to make molehills out of. <laughs> But at least they're trying to keep peace in the world. Yeah, they're not only keeping their own peace, but they're all trying to cut themselves another one. <laughs> Italy, it's the black church, and Germany, the brown church, and Ethiopia, it's the night church. <laughs> and in this country, it's the stuffed shirt. <laughs> no, no, Molly, we lost our shirts in 1929. <laughs> well, say, I wonder if the League of Nations is keeping the streetcars out of Whistler Vista. Uh -uh. Oh, here it comes now, Molly. Oh, yeah. Now, get our 14 cents ready now. Oh, McGee, huh? I haven't got me purse. You'll have to pay it. Who, me? Shucks, I ain't got any money with me, Molly. I thought you had it. Oh, now what do we do? Leave it to me, Molly. I'll just tell the motorman who I am. Oh, oh. yeah? Well, that'll be fine. I'll run along beside the car and catch you when you're thrown out. <laughs> Don't be like that. Stand back. Here she comes now. <laughs> All aboard. 14th Street car. Board. Oh, Henry! Oh, Henry! Hey, hold the car, motorman. Here comes another passenger. Oh, Henry! Oh, uh, that's only my wife. What's the matter, Katie? The sweepstakes, Henry. The sweepstakes. We won. What? We won $50,000. Oh, I'm so excited. 
hot dog. Fifty grand. I'll be home as soon as I finish the run, Katie. Never mind the run. Leave the old streetcar here. You're a gentleman now. Okay, baby, let's go. So long, boys. Well, for the... Can you imagine that, Molly? We wait two hours for a streetcar. When it gets here, the motorman quits. Now what do we do? Well, Chuck's, I... Uh... Hey, uh, listen, folks. Hey. Uh, how many of you want me to run this streetcar? <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Come on, Molly, give me the handle. Oh, okay, folks, Fibber McGee is at the throttle. Oh, McGee, what do you know about running a streetcar? Why, it's easy, Molly. All you got to do is remember not to have enough change, keep the car as dirty as possible, and never stop for folks if it's raining. Oh, All aboard! Come on, there. over the Wistful Vista streetcar because the motorman quit when he won $50,000 in the sweepstakes. It's a one-man car, but Fibber seems to be having his hands full, even with Molly's help. Okay, folks. Back in the car there. Plenty of room in the rear of the car, folks. You know, McGee, you run this streetcar pretty good for an amateur. Huh. What do you mean, amateur? Don't let that gong fool you. <laughs> yes. I run one of these for years down in Mobile, Molly. Motorman McGee, they called me in them days. Oh. Motorman McGee, the metal marvel of the modern motor movement masterminded my store, the Macada. How many fares did that fella have rung up, Molly? Thirteen. How many folks on board? Twenty-seven. I was afraid of that. Did you notice the knuckles on that motorman that quit, Molly? All scarred up. From what? Knocking down nickels. <laughs> Hey, they ought to train octopuses for this job. McGee, the plural for octopus is octocat. <laughs> anyway, this here's no job for a fellow with just one pair of arms. You got to open and shut the door, make change, give transfers, ring the bell, call streets and answer questions, and start and stop and put sand on the track. Oh, cool. oh that reminds me, McGee. Huh? You need some more sand. You better stop and get some. Okay, but where? Well, stop in front of the wistful Vista cafeteria. I'll ask them to take the spinach first. <laughs> okay. Oh, stop the car, McGee. There's a lady ahead waving to us. Oh, look out there. Hey, watch your step there, sis. Hey. Don't you know no better than to get on when the car's moving? Oh, don't be so fussy, young man. I know what I'm doing. I always get on that way. Sometimes they don't even slow down for me. I have to run along behind and pull the trolley off. That stops them every time. Oh, okay, sis. Ten cents, please. You haven't got change for a 20, have you, young man? 20? We haven't got change for a 20, have we, Molly? We haven't got change, period. I'm sorry, ma'am. Sit down, and maybe we'll have some change later. Well, I'll sit down, all right, but you'll never have change for a 20 on this streetcar line, Sonny. Oh. <laughs> I've been riding on this same $20 bill for 15 years. <laughs> say, move your foot over so as I can kick the gong. Huh? I say, let me ding the dinger. All the other boys let me ding it like this. Not bad, eh, Sonny? <laughs> Much obliged. Teach you that old blister, Molly. 
She flips onto a moving streetcar like she was a high school gal, and then she wants to ring the gong. Yeah. Well, it's your own fault, McGee. You would work on a streetcar. Would work on a streetcar or would work in the home. Johnson's Wax oh. will give it a lustrous, <laughs> easy-to-clean finish. <laughs> oh, hello there, Hopper. Heavenly days, Mr. Wilcox. I didn't see you sitting over there. Well, I didn't see you either, but I heard your voices. You know, this is the longest tunnel I ever went through on a streetcar. Tunnel? We ain't going through no tunnels. Why, it's you, Mr. Wilcox. You got your hat pulled over your eyes. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, well, so I am. Well, thanks. Street, 29th Street. All aboard, folks. All aboard. Watch your step, mister. Thank you. Thank you, my little thank you, Lily. Thank you. Seven cents, please, mister. Seven cents. Ah, yes. Seven cents. Seven cents is the regular fare, I take it. The regular fare, all right, bud, but we're the ones that take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good, my little chipmunk. Very good. But I must tell you that I don't pay fares on streetcars, my friends, being a member of the police force. Yes, I'm on the police force, and what's more, the police force is on to me, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, let's see your star. Oh, yes, my star, star. Now, what did I do with my star? Oh, yes, I wear it on my vest. But during this warm weather, I don't wear a vest. <laughs> Simple, isn't it? No vest, <laughs> no star. Mm -hmm. No star, no right. Why, sure, how do we know you're a police? Sure, how indeed. You may well ask, my little silkworm. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, I'm a plain clothes man. <laughs> did you ever see any plainer clothes than these? <laughs> no, you never did. Now, uh, let me see your fingers, Mortimer. My fingers? Here. Aha, uh -huh, just as I thought. Covered with fingerprints, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll let you go this time, but don't let it happen again. And as for you, my little gadabout, you remind me of a beautiful Irish ballad. Yes, indeed, a beautiful Irish ballad. Heavenly days, how's that? You've heard of the Rose of Trolley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, don't mind me, my little cow slips. I'll just stand back here and keep an eye on things, including that gentleman's uh, newspaper. Move over, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> McGee, so far we have three passes, two transfers, one, uh, one male man and a cop. Business is picking up. <laughs> Trouble is, they don't pay after they're picked up. Yeah. <laughs> All aboard. Watch your step, folks. All aboard. All aboard. There, please. Hurry up, sis. Seven cents. Oh, I'm sorry, but I left my money at home. Oh. Where do you live, babe? Well, McGee, maybe she'll send the company seven cents later. Mm. Oh, I will. Oh, I promise. <laughs> What's that you got there? A violin case? Oh, yes, it is. Oh. <laughs> well, open it up and fiddle for your fare. Oh, okay. Folks, this is Audrey Call, Marcelli's little solo violinist. She has with her her own arrangement of the old rocking chair. Stop the car, Fibber. Start rocking, Audrey. <laughs>
passengers we got on this streetcar, McGee. Why, Molly? Well, while the little girl was playing the violin, I passed the half bird, seeing that she didn't have any money with her. How much did you get, Molly? Nothing. And somebody got the band off of your hat. <laughs> oh, hello there, Sylvie. Oh, hi there, Sil. I didn't know you was on board. Hi, ma'am. How are you, boss? Yeah. Did you pay your seven cents, silly? Oh, no, ma'am. I don't ever pay no fare. I'll, I'll, I'll clean out the car at the end of the line, please, ma'am. Mm. <laughs> I wonder who does pay to ride on this thing. I've got to go see about a job. A job? <laughs> oh, silly, you're as bad as McGee. Am I, ma'am? Really? <laughs> oh, what you mean, as bad as me? Well, you get a new job every week and can't hang on to them. Yeah, to me too, ma'am. Yeah. The trouble with you is you don't dress right, Sylvia. You, you don't pay enough attention to your appearance. Why? I says you ain't neat enough for business. No, sir, but I ain't never been in no neat business yet. <laughs> <laughs> Them pants is a little big for you, aren't they, silly? Yes, ma'am, I'm afraid so. These are throw me downs, ma'am. Oh, you mean hand-me-down, Philip. No, ma'am, I mean throw me down. They was my brother's pants, ma'am. I had to throw him down four times to get him off. <laughs> well, here's where I get off, ma'am. So long, boss. So, so long. long. Johnson Street. Let him out, please. All aboard. All aboard. Careful there, sis. Oh, I can get on all alone, I bet you. Oh, okay. <laughs> where are you going to, sis? First street car ride. Where's your seven cents? Maybe she isn't old enough, McGee. Oh, uh, how old are you, sis? You can't guess, I bet you. I, I don't want to guess. I want to know. How old are you? <laughs> how old are you? <laughs> What's that got to do with it? With what? With... Dad, that it. Who's asking the questions here? You or me? Both of us, I bet you. <laughs> oh, come on now, sis. How old are you? Five. Five going on six? No, five going on six, five. <laughs> Well, if the collections keep up this way, McGee, it's going to be tough on the surface line. What line? Surface. Here's a good surface line. Johnson's Wax saves the surface of floors, furniture, and woodwork. <laughs> Who's getting on, Molly? A Chinese fellow with some packages, McGee. Watch your step, please. All right, McGee, go ahead. Okay. Go. Please, I'd very much, please. You let me off from Liver Street. Liver Street? <laughs> we ain't got no Liver Street in this town, John. No, 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 say liver, say liver, liver street. No, he means River Street, McGee. Oh. Yes, Liver Street. You're very stupid. Uh, uh, oh, yeah? <laughs> say, listen, John, if I... Oh, had... McGee, smell what he's got in the package. Mm-hmm. What is it, mister? Stop doing? No, chow mein. Chow mein, eh? Here. Say, what is chow mein anyway, John? What's it made of? Uh, all the same electricity. What do you mean it's the same as electricity? <laughs> Nobody knows what electricity is, John. We know what it does, but we don't know what it is. Yes, all the same chow mein. Savvy what to, no savvy what is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe on the next trip you can uh, bring us something to eat. A uh, chow mein, Missy? Uh, no, chop suey. Uh, what do you want, McGee? Uh, I'll take an order of uh, egg foo young. Uh, here, here, liver please. Here come liver please. Now, don't forget to bring that order over. Okay, chop to a lady, fooey on you. What? <laughs> oh, look, McGee, we're going within a block of our own house. Huh? We're block of our own sure. house? Sure. I never knew they were streetcar tracks so close to us. <laughs> McGee, huh? there ain't. Huh? They ain't what? They ain't any tracks. We're running on the concrete and go downhill. Huh? Shut it off, McGee. Put on the brake. Oh, dear. Won't work, Molly. We're going oh, too fast. Oh, dear, heavenly day. What's the matter here? What's the matter? Where are we? We're off the track, Mr. Wilcox. Oh, heavenly day. We're going to make it. Steer it, McGee. Steer it. What do you mean? Steer it. You can't steer a streetcar. Oh, Hang on, everybody. We're going off the road. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Are you okay, Molly? Oh, yes, I'm all right. How about everybody else? Is anybody hurt? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, me no hurt. Me got off Liver Street. <laughs> Gee, somebody's going to get sore at us plowing through that fence that way, Molly. 
We'll have to sue us, I'm afraid, McGee. Huh? We'll have to sue who? Us. Look around, Diggerness. We crashed into our own backyard. Come on in, folks, and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> that you can cut your cleaning work just about in half by polishing your furniture, floors, and woodwork with Johnson's Wax. The wax goes deep down into the pores and cracks, sealing them so tightly that dirt can't penetrate. Actually, only half as much dust clings to a Johnson waxed surface as to an unwaxed surface. Now, if you have new furniture or new floors, you should protect them now with Johnson's Wax so they won't get worn and shabby looking as time goes on. If your floors and furniture are not new, Johnson's Wax will soon bring back much of their lost beauty by removing all the dull film and giving them a lustrous polish. Once your floors are Johnson Wax, old-fashioned scrubbing methods can be abolished forever. Ask your dealer for genuine Johnson's Wax in the attractive yellow cap. And remember, you save as much as one-third by ordering the larger sizes. Just as the best housekeepers use Johnson's Wax, Johnson's Glow Coat, and Johnson's Furniture Polish to keep their houses clean and shining, so the most particular car owners keep their cars sparkling with Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. No? All you get is kicks. Yeah, kicks. Well, I know. That's why streetcar men do what they do at the end of their run, Molly. What's that? Just turn their seats the other way and go home. Good night. Good night, all. 